This is a look at the ASI Air version 1.4. It hasn't been released yet as of today, January 2nd, 2020. Uh, but I have my gear set up inside just to give people an idea of what version 1.4 brings to the ASI Air. So, first I load the app up. And you'll see it brings you to a new uh, screen to make sure your cameras, the focal length, the uh, guide scope, and guide camera are connected. Also notice up in the upper right corner of the screen, it has uh, app version 1.4, 4.38 for the firmware. And it has the date, the time, the lat and long, uh, which is correct in there. So I'm going to go enter. And now this brings up the ASI Air interface. So I'm going to start with the upper left under the ASI Air settings. You'll notice that it still has the power button. They added the current download speed, the wireless hotspot, hotspot frequency band. It explains it that 2.4 gigahertz is slower, but it'll extend your range or there's 5 gigahertz which is the shorter but high speed uh, connection. It also the new version 1.4 brings Wi-Fi station mode, uh, wired Ethernet. I have to play with these just to see what they do but this is the first time turning version 1.4 on so I just want to take a look at uh, what it brings us. It has the CPU temperature and the under voltage warning. So I've had a little bit of time to play with the Wi-Fi station mode and the Ethernet cable. And so I got the Ethernet cable working. Um, all you do is plug in the Ethernet cable to the ASI Air and run that to your Wi-Fi router. And it will connect. And then for the Wi-Fi station mode, you can uh, connect that and to connect to your Wi-Fi station you need the IP address. You can either Google your IP address or when you click on wired Ethernet it will give you the IP address and I'm just not going to click on that so my IP address isn't broadcast all over the internet so I don't get hacked. Um, so just to go over that a little bit now when I walk around my house anywhere in my house I have the uh, ASI Air connected and I can take a five second image and it's lightning fast no matter where I am in my house. So my mount that's outside uh, when I'm out by my mount my cell phone can connect to my home Wi-Fi so this will extend the range greatly without even having to use a Wi-Fi extender on my back deck to get the, the range. So you can see it's instant. I'm actually on the other side of the house testing this. And now I'm just going to go outside to give it another test. And I'll do another five second image. And you see bottom right hand corner loading and it's lightning fast. So now if I go to the guide screen and go to connect my guide camera first and I loop it I'm doing a two second loop and you can see it's lightning fast and whereas if I was just connected to the ASI Air I would not be getting this uh, reception and I wouldn't be able to connect unless I had a Wi-Fi extender uh, halfway between myself and the ASI Air so this is a great new feature in version 1.4 and uh, on the original ASI Air and also the uh, ASI Air Pro. And again, I'm using the original ASI Air. For Next underneath the ASI Air settings is the main camera settings. And this is where you can select your camera. Uh, you can see I also have the ASI 224MC as my guide camera. Uh, there, but I'm going to select the ASI 294MC Pro. And then I can enter my main scope focal length. 
I'm actually using the Hyperstar lens, so it's 516 millimeters. And then here's the gain. You can adjust the gain. And I usually use the middle medium gain, which is 120 for my camera. And this can vary for different cameras. Cooling, you can turn uh, on. I usually use negative 20. Uh, custom file name, they allow you to customize your file name and you can sort as far as uh, the bin, the date, the temp, and gain. And you can also, under the automation, you can save your files uh, with a, a name. So if I'm going after M31, I can name it Light M31, depending on the gain, which I'll show you once we get into the auto run features. And under advanced settings, you'll have a couple more options. Histograms using a log scale, auto white balance on screen, mono bin, and continuous preview. I like to leave the continuous preview off because when I loop my preview, I'm usually on the focus screen, so I like to do it on that way. The next setting we have is the guide settings, and this is where we have our guide camera. You can toggle that to look and see which cameras are connected to your ASI Air. And again, I have the 294 and the 224. The 224 is going to be my guide camera. The guide scope focal length, I'm using a 60 millimeter guide scope, which is 162 millimeter focal length. And I can adjust the gain as far as low, medium, or high gain. And you can adjust the calibration steps, the max deck duration, max RA duration, and you can do auto restore calibration. I don't like to leave that setting on because I like to recalibrate every time. Dither settings, you have your, uh, you can enable your dithering on or off. You have the pixels, stability, settle time, and the interval. Uh, how many images to take before you start dithering. And so I like to dither every five images. And then we have our telescope settings. I'm connected to the Celestron AVX mount. So you can see everything's connected. Um, you want to connect once you do your two-star alignment or you wake your mount up from uh, hibernation. And you have the go-to auto center, which will... If you're using the ASI Air database, it will automatically center your target you're going to. But I use Sky Safari, so I'm going to leave this off. And here's you can enable or disable the tracking, and then go to home position. And after the telescope settings, we have the EFW, the electronic filter wheel. So I have a EFW connected, and you can see I have the five slot filter wheel, the EFW Mini. So it has five slots available. Uh, when you go to edit filter name, you can edit each one to uh, one of the choices listed. It's not custom customizable yet. Uh, that's one thing that I think would be nice. So if I threw my ZWO dual band filter in, I could specify duo or uh, if you're using a tri-band filter, use tri-band uh, name. After the EFW, you have the EAF, which is the electronic autofocuser. Um, this one, you can see they don't have the autofocus up and running yet in version 1.4, but it's still coming soon. Uh, you can edit your cur current uh, location, your position on the EAF, and you can go to whichever position you want. So if you have a rough idea of, hey, I need to be at uh, 12,000 steps to, to focus, and then you can fine tune it from there. You can also have the reverse uh, on. And then you, you can p adjust your parameters for fine focus or uh, the steps or the coarse focus steps, and then the max steps. And you can adjust the backlash and then you can have, have it so there's an audible beep. And then after the focuser settings, you have the storage settings. So this is where, this is kind of like the manager where you have your storage. On version 1.4, I have 
my 25 gigabyte, uh, well, 32 gigabytes SD card, but there's 25 gigabytes of storage. And under image management, you can go to your uh, light frames. You still can't view them yet. I think that would be a great upgrade to be able to view your kind of like a fits viewer to see what your image looks like. So if you have uh, something wrong or star trails, you can just delete that image right in the image manager. But all you can do is kind of just look at them, look at the file names. And then about, you have the ASI Air version 1.4, the firmware is 4.38. You can look at the update log, what's new and the different features. So now I'm going to go back to the ASI Air preview screen. And so on the right hand side, you notice there's RA and deck location. You have targets, you have your speed, and you can manually slew your mount if needed to focus your target. So I'm just going to click on the target box, and this will bring up um, tonight's best, which inside the ASI Air app, it kind of displays some good names and good targets that are going to be up tonight. And I can choose one of those targets. It also has, up in the upper right corner, you can click on the three bars and it'll show uh, different databases. So tonight's best, 691 ob objects, name stars, sun and planets, uh, some of the different objects in the sky, and then you can make your own favorite database. You can also add uh, a new category. And then on the left-hand side, we have our histogram. You have the focuser control, which you can, the upper is the coarse, and then the bottom is the more fine. Then you have your guide camera, your guide graph, the plate solving button, and then crosshair. So I'll look at the focus screen. On the focus, I'm just going to loop it at uh, one second. And I'm going to use this little arrow to hide the uh, go-tos. So I'm set up inside, so I don't have any stars to focus on. But when I bring up the, on the left-hand side, you'll see the magnifying glass on the focus. And I'm going to go into that, and you can see it's going to have uh, the HFD value, which I use to help focus, and you have the brightness and the max. Then you'll notice that you have four different bends you can use. When I focus, when I start focusing, I use Bend 4. Bend 4 is a wider field of view on the focus screen. And then I'll bring it down, and then I'll finally get to Ben 1. And Ben 1 is a more narrow field of view, which really helps get those stars uh, tight. So then once I'm on Ben 1, I'll go to a star in the field, and then that's where I'll hit, click on the magnifying glass, and I'll try to get that HFD value as small as I can without fighting the uh, atmosphere and the seeing, because you're going to get into a... A battle trying to get it as low as you can but if you're too picky about it you're just gonna be going back and forth back and forth and it's gonna take up a lot of your time doing that and now we go to the polar alignment feature so this is the polar alignment feature uh, whereas uh, when you first start up in the night you can go to polar align and hit play it's gonna take an initial um, it's going to take an initial image and it's going to solve that. Uh, I'm set up inside so the plate solve is going to fail for me, uh, but it's going to take a, a image and then it's going to rotate and it's going to rotate around and then it's going to take another plate solve and then you're going to adjust that uh, to center um, just so you can have, it's basically a polar alignment tool which works really well. I've used it several times and it gets me nice pinpoint stars and makes my auto guiding a lot easier. So 
So back on the preview screen, after you take a, I usually use a five second exposure for my preview screen. And once I do my five second exposure, you'll see on the left side the plate solve button is illuminated. After it loads it, so in the bottom right you can see it's loading the image. There we go. And now plate solve comes up. So on the left side I'm going to click plate solve and it's going to try, attempt to plate solve. But you can see here um, with my setup my field of view is 2.13 degrees by 1.45 degrees so I'm well within the uh, plate solving uh, parameters but I'm inside so it's going to fail. And again, there's the crosshairs. The crosshair is nice to use on the uh, focus screen, just so you can, while you're doing your star alignment, you can use the crosshair to center your alignment stars. So now I'm going to go to the auto run screen. And beneath auto run, you can see there's the bo three boxes or three bars with three dots. So I'm going to click that. And this is where it gives me my uh, shooting schedule. And in the upper left, you can rename your target. So you name it, rename it Thor's helmet. So every shot now is going to uh, save it as uh, light because I have light highlighted and it's going to save it Thor's helmet and then whatever parameter if you want your exposure, the bin, the temperature if you want the, all that there. Uh, I also I was hoping they were going to add adjustable gains gain on it but it doesn't look like that's there. It just has the adjustable per sequence is exposure, the bin, the filter and then how many times you want to repeat the exposure and you can select the type of image you're taking. You can also click on the square and you can modify the exposure so if there's a value that isn't in the preset um, value you can add your own. And same thing with repeat if you only want to take uh, like 45 images, you can manually type in 45 and it'll do 45 exposures for you. So it has a, on the left hand side you can group by slot or you can leave that off. I like to group by slot just in case if I have uh, several images going or several different exposures, if I'm trying to bracket my exposures, um, it'll take one one image of each if that's uh, disabled. So group by slot is disabled so it's going to go through uh, each of the exposures. But when it's group on slot it'll start taking my darks first. So it'll take 53, 300 seconds darks before it moves on to the 120 second darks. So that's how that works. And then below that is shooting delay. So you can delay your first shot or you can delay in between your shots. And then at the end of your shooting schedule, you can select it to uh, shut down your ASI air or go to home position. I don't like to use the go to home position uh, just because I don't want to wake up in the middle or wake up in the morning and find the mount. Uh, something went wrong and the home position was off, so I usually just leave that disabled. But sometimes I will leave it as shut down the ASI air so it shuts down the cooler. And on the bottom, it has the estimated time for your shooting schedule, the duration. It also has the estimated size of the files that you're saving. Bottom left of the screen, you'll have your screen resolution or your image resolution. You'll have your gain setting, the temperature, and if your cooler is on or off. And if you take a preview image and you want to save it, on the right hand side, there's a little box with the arrow pointing down. You just push that button and it'll save that preview image. So that's a quick look at version 1.4.